In this tutorial, we're going to show how to integrate Photo Editor SDK and Video Editor SDK for iOS and Android into your React Native app. Therefore, we created React Native modules for our products to simplify this process for you as much as possible. We're going to use Video Editor SDK's README, which is in most parts identical to the Photo Editor SDK's README and Visual Studio Code. So let's get started. First, we create a React Native project with the name Demo, based on the default template by using the command npx react native init demo. The project will now be initialized and automatically install all dependencies of the current React Native version. Afterwards, we can find the new React Native project ready to use in the folder Demo. So we'll speed this up a little. We already prepared another folder with resources and assets that we want to integrate in our app. Here we chose an image. The required licenses for our Photo Editor SDK and Video Editor SDK for both target platforms, a video and two logos that we will later use to show how we can customize our editors. We copy these resources into the root of our project to make the resources accessible for our app. Now we switch to the folder of the demo project. We can now copy and execute the command yarn add react native video editor SDK from the README to install the dependencies to the react native module for our video editor SDK and to the react native module for photo editor SDK. Now we're going to set up the dependencies for our native iOS libraries. We can simply copy the command from the README and execute it to install all iOS dependencies. They include the native photo editor SDK and video editor SDK libraries that are required by our React Native modules. And now we set up the dependencies for our native Android libraries. The required steps that we will now take are described in detail in the README. We copy the lines and add them at the end of our file. Now we need to change the super class of our main application class to enable multidex. Next, we add the Imagely repository and plug in by copying these lines and add them at the top of our build gradle file located in our Android folder. Now we can configure our photo editor SDK and video editor SDK by opening the build gradle file in the Android slash app folder and add these lines under the apply plugin com.android.application. Getting back to our iOS version, we can now launch our demo project on iOS, which will currently look like a plain React Native project that we initialized with the first command. The main difference to an off-the-shelf React Native project is that our React Native modules are installed and ready to use in the app.js file once the native projects are compiled. Then it won't be necessary to recompile the native projects for the remainder of this tutorial. We sped up the compilation a little and here we go. Our React Native app is running on the iOS simulator. Now we use the same for the Android version and wait until the project is compiled. Now the demo project launched on both platforms as we can see on the right on the iOS simulator at the top and on the Android emulator at the bottom of the screen. We've decided that we want to start our photo editor by pressing a button. So next we're going to actually customize our React Native app by adding this button. Therefore, we open the app.js file and import the button component in order to create a button with the title Edit a sample image. For now, we leave the onPress function empty. 
We save the app.js file to trigger a refresh of the running apps and immediately see the result on the right. The new button appears in both the iOS and the Android app. Now we create a second button with the title Edit a Sample Video. This will respectively start our video editor. And again, we save the app.js file and see the second button appear on the right side. Next, we are going to add the code that actually opens our editors when we press the buttons. Visual Studio Code automatically imported the respective React Native Photo Editor SDK module for us at the very top of the file while writing the code that makes use of our SDK. We do the same for the Video Editor SDK. We use the require function to make static assets available to our app. Here we require our sample image and our sample video that we copy to the apps folder in the beginning and pass them as the first arguments to our open editor functions. The first argument can also be a regular URI. We save the app.js file again and now we can click the buttons to start our photo editor or video editor. There we go. We still see a watermark here. The reason for this watermark is that we haven't unlocked our SDK so far, which we will do next. We unlock both products with our licenses to get rid of the watermark. If not unlocked, the watermark will be on both the image and video previews, as well as on the exported images and videos. To unlock the products, we use the unlock with license function of each SDK. In total, we need four license files, one license file for each product and platform combination. The license files should be named PESDK license and VESDK license with platform specific extensions iOS GSON and Android GSON. React Native will then automatically pick the right file for the corresponding platform. After this, the watermarks will be removed for Photo Editor SDK and Video Editor SDK on both platforms. And now you can also see it in the simulator. No watermarks anymore. In the next step, we're going to change the configuration of the editors. If no changes are made to the configuration, our default stickers are available with the editor. To customize them, we need to import the configuration from either the Photo Editor SDK or Video Editor SDK. The configurations are compatible between both products. So for this tutorial, we decided to use the Video Editor SDK configuration, which we are now using by adding configuration to the React Native Video Editor SDK imports. We decided that we want to add custom stickers to our editors. Therefore, we design a non-default configuration to the sticker tool. To customize the sticker assets, we need to define the sticker categories array. Here we define a new category and name the identifier demo sticker category. These asset identifiers must always be unique. Next, we set a name for the category and we name it Logos. Each category also requires a thumbnail image to be displayed in the editor. For the thumbnail, we use the React logo that we added to the folder of our app at the very beginning. Next, we define the items for this new sticker category. These items are the actual stickers that we can apply to the edited image or video. We now create a new sticker for the React logo. Therefore, we call the identifier Demo Sticker React and name it React. These sticker names won't appear in the UI, but they are used for accessibility. Now we need to define the actual image that should be used for that sticker. Here we use the React image again. To create a second sticker, we can now copy and paste the code of the first sticker. 
we create a sticker with our Imagely logo and rename the identifier of the paste code to Demo Sticker Imagely. Accordingly, we set the name to Imagely and change the file to imagely.png. In addition, we want to specify a non-default tint mode for our second sticker by using tint mode, tint mode dot solid, which enables us to change the color of the sticker. The tint mode type is automatically added to the video editor SDK imports for us by Visual Studio Code. Now that we completed our configuration, we need to pass it as the second argument to the open editor functions in order to take effect. We save the app.js file again to refresh the running apps and we can see the result live after starting a new editing session. Please note that you cannot alter the configuration of a running editor instance. You always need to start a new editing session to see configuration changes. We want to use another feature of our SDKs which is called serialization. With the serialization feature, we can capture all image and video editing operations that are applied in the editor and export them. This allows us to import the editing operations in later sessions and continue editing. The serializations are compatible between both products as well. The input serialization is the third parameter of the open editor functions of our SDKs and the output serializations is optionally part of the result type. First, we check if the result is null. This is the case when a user clicks the discard button in the editor and thus does not export an image or video. If the result is not null, we know that the user exported an image or video. Then we can assign the exported serialization to the previously defined global serialization variable, which will then be input to the next editing session. We copy the code and edit to the video editor as well to enable the serialization function here too. Now one thing is left to enable the actual serialization export in the configuration. The serialization export is disabled per default because not every user needs the serialization feature. Here we enable it now and also change the export type to object. By doing so, the result type of the editor will contain the serialization as an object. Per default, the serialization is exported to a file and that file name is returned as a part of the export result. Writing the serialization to a file is a reasonable default as serializations can be quite large, especially if large amounts of binary data for personal stickers are embedded. Now we can run the app on the simulator and use all the parameters that we configured in this tutorial. First, we can add our custom stickers, both the React logo and the Imagely logo. Here we can also change the colors, which we enabled with the tint mode. We can also use the text design tool to add a phrase to our image. Here we can pick different designs, so we're trying a couple and place a text design fitting to the image and logo. Next, we export our image with a serialization. With the serialization function enabled, it is now possible to import the editing operations into our video editor. This allows us to keep on editing because the serialization is compatible between both products. So here, we can add further words to our text design. We can also put filters on our video. For example, we can choose the Peach Duotone and increase the contrast a little. And here we go! We successfully integrated Photo Editor SDK and Video Editor SDK into our React Native app.